If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman, spiritual business coach. I am here as always with my best friend in Boquete, Catherine Laranger, and she is a spiritual business coach as well. And so we are talking today about how to come into alignment with your next level of income before you get there, right? Uh, so this is going to be a fun one, right? Because we there are so many pieces around this particular piece of work because there are issues around receiving and there are issues around belief structure about what it's like to be, you know, at the higher income level. There are potentially issues around being, staying loyal to the rules of belonging. If your family has never made more money than X, or if your partner doesn't make as much as you're shooting for, and you're afraid that's going to impact your relationship to make more. There's, there's so many pieces and parts that can go into the, the, the income level plus, and, you know, sometimes it's, you literally have to revamp your entire business structure in order to make it move. Right. So I talk to people all the time about whether they're doing, you know, whether it's time to switch from doing a, uh, hourly basis to, you know, one-to-one to, -one to a one-to-many with an outcome-based, uh, approach to your business structure. You know, sometimes your business needs to completely shift the way it does things in order to be able to scale it to the next level. And each time you scale, you have to take on a new way of thinking because that, you know, that level of income requires a different level of thinking in order to get there and to be able to stay there. So where do you want to start, Catherine? <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. Yeah. One of the, I'm just saying one of my clients who went from when we started working together, the highest they had done was 10,000 a month. And then when we finished, they were at hundred thousand months. And so there's a whole kind of sequence of things that needs to happen. And the, it, it always starts with the vision. What would you love? Like getting really clear on what is it that I would love? And then who is that person who's having that experience and that result in their life? And in my program, we go through levels of identity and how you actually shift identity and how you actually shift identity based on the vision. So it's not about shifting that identity based on external results because the, the person who is having that, you know, hundred thousand dollar month has a totally different way of approaching things, thinking, believing all of that stuff than someone who's doing a thousand dollars a month. Right. So it is a it, it is a, it's really stepping outside of that comfort zone, right? So we all have, you can think about like, we all have like a box and that's our comfort zone. And that's like all of our experiences, all of the things that you talked about, Kelly, the rules of belonging, you know, kind of family things, but we're making an agreement with our, you know, our subconscious mind, our patterns, all of it are in our comfort zone. The results that we've had so far, how much money we've ever made, how much our partner has made. And so when we want to up-level our financial impact, it's about how do I step into the identity of the person who's experiencing that level of financial abundance before my results are reflecting that. Yeah. So, yeah. so often we look to the conditions first. So we look to the bank account. We look to, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm currently making, you know, a thousand dollars a month or $5,000 a month or whatever that is. And that's what I'm putting my belief and my focus into. And then I'm thinking and making decisions based on that. So the trick there is to really connect to, well, how does the person, so say you're going from like 5,000 to, you know, 10,000, I, I wouldn't go from like 5,000 to a hundred thousand because you're, there's no believability there. Right. So you, so you want to be in a stretch that feels like, okay, like, I don't know how this is going to happen, but there's a part of me that believes that it is possible. So, so when you find that number, and that's one of the things that I do in my program, we, we identify the top two goals for your year. And one of them is always a financial goal because that's how we measure business success, right? Is one of the right. financial goals. And so identifying what is the, the stretch there that still is believable, but has a bit of a, you know, like the kind of pucker factor, like, oh, I don't know how that's going to happen. You know, I'm going to, uh. 
So, so then how does the person who's receiving that level of income, how are they thinking? What decisions are they making? How are they investing in themselves? Right. How are they, what are the stories that they're telling when they're paying their bills? How do they feel about that? So it's all about the vibration and becoming that vibrational match to the person who's currently experiencing that level of income because when, so say you're going from a 10,000 month to a, you know, hundred thousand dollar month, you're not going to do that overnight, but that person is thinking very differently, right? Right. Their business is structured very differently. So it's about making ready and, and acting as if, and building your belief and your faith and your expectancy, but it's really, so, you know, how, how would I feel? How would I think? What decisions would I make when I have that level of financial abundance? Right. And it's the identity, you know, that's, that's the piece, all identity, right? you know, Everything's it's identity. all identity, yep. because I mean, we were talking about this in a previous episode around being famous, right. For me, uh, you know, I spent, I spent a year working on what would it take for me to be okay with being famous, right. Because I had huge resistance, right. <laughs> Massive resistance to it. And so, you know, unwinding the resistance is one of the factors, right? It's about being able to say, okay, so how do I get on board with what I want when part of me really doesn't want it, right? Because that's when you have internal struggle like that, you're not going to manifest in the outside what what you have on the inside, you know, what you're intending, because your internal dialogue is out of alignment with what you're choosing, right? And so part of that choosing is to unwind the part of it that's in resistance, right? To, to really let that go and to address the issues and to move forward through the belief structures and to establish some new belief structures that are in support of where it is that you're going, right? So, you know, part of it is being able to wrap your head around the money that you're talking about bringing in. And that's the reason why you don't make it unreasonable, right? So I have a joint venture that is currently on hold, but will be happening uh, once my joint venture partner is able to come back to it. Um, But the number she presented me with for income monthly blew my brain when we were talking about this. My brain just literally fritz. And I was like, I I cannot conceive of that number, right? Does not compute, does not compute. Does not compute. My brain was like, what? And she was absolutely clear that she could get me there. And I'm like, I, 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 what would yeah. I even do with that much money? Right. Exactly. That's right? the thing. I wouldn't even know where to begin with right. that, with that monthly revenue. Yeah. yeah. And so I started doing the math and I was like, okay, so how much goes to taxes? How much goes to, you know, tithe and savings? And, you know, and I sat down with my husband and I said, okay, what do we want to do with this money when it comes in? You know, we've, we've got to figure out how do we manage it? Mm-hmm. you know, responsibly. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I had conversations with financial planners and, and I looked at, you know, we would be rapidly exceeding the FDIC insured level of, of bank accounts. And so I'm like, okay, so where do I go to put money once I've exceeded the, with the 250,000 that the FDIC will insure in any given bank. And it's like, okay, well, you can spread things around banks, but banks aren't really the best That's way to keep your money. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, and it's not the best place to keep your money. If it, it doesn't work for you there. Right. So, you know, we, we started looking at other things there. I started talking to my husband about, you know, which, what order do we want to do things? We're going to buy a house here in Boquete. Do we want to do that first, which re- would require a huge amount of, of cash up front because you, you know, it's hard to get loans here as a gringo. Right. And so, you know, we decided that, nope, we would rather build a portfolio first and then buy the house so that the portfolio was contributing to the house purchase instead of, us putting off having the portfolio and all of that. And so, you know, it's just all of this stuff that we were having conversations about, you know, what do we want and, you know, how do we want to have it and all of the things. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, but it was acting as if, right. I, I was absolutely certain that this was going to work. And Mm -hmm. she was certain I was certain. I'm like, yes, I will buy into this. I will be, 
in the st space where this is coming and I need to plan for it, right? Mm -hmm. I know this is coming. What do I do to plan yeah. for it, yeah. right? Yeah. And that is the case, right? So what's interesting is that even though that JV is on hold now, it changed my goals for my business mm -hmm. to a much higher level because I had started wrapping my head around that, right? And then when the JV went on hold, I was like, but no, I'm supposed to have this kind of money. <laughs> and, so, mm -hmm. and so I started, you know, shifting my business to account for that as well. And so these are the sorts of things that we pay attention to as we go through is that, you know, once you can up level what you can conceive of coming in, you know, it now my, my goal for next month is not that level, but it's like five times what it would have been otherwise. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and, and then the plan is that it'll just work its way up to that level too. But, you know, I've got a very short term goal to five X my income. Right. <laughs> and so I'm like, Oh, okay. I can do that. Right. But it's because my brain is now going, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I know exactly what I would do with that money. And it's not, you know, it's like, Oh, not enough. Right. <laughs> like yeah. when I take it yeah. down, to a quarter of what I'd been promised, right? I'm going, oh yeah, that's not enough because I already made the plan based on that. So mm -hmm. now I'm like already in this place of cognitive dissonance for that 5X number that's gonna drag me up even higher, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, it's a fabulous model for, for really bringing yourself into alignment with that level of income, right? And being able to understand what people do when they have that kind of money. You know, how mm -hmm. do you operate when you have, and I think that doing the, uh, the investor program was super helpful for that too, because I've got people still reaching out to me going, Hey, do you want to invest in this? Do you want to invest in that? Da, 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 da. I'm in, I'm still in a, a group. I'm not in that group, but I got invited into another group because I was so active that is of former members. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not doing anything with it, but I'm keeping it so that when the money is flowing in from that JV, I have a place to put it with people yeah. I like, who I know yeah. are doing investments, where I can be hands off and just be the money lender, right? And so, you know, those sorts of things, but you just, this is the, this is the piece of the puzzle that, that things start to coalesce, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, you know, we yeah. talked about this in the, the last episode, last episode, yeah. We've done three yeah. episodes today, guys. So. <laughs> My brain's going, which one did we talk about this in? Ah, yeah. So, but we talked about this in the last episode with the idea that sometimes you're not where you're supposed to be, but there's a reason you were there, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so you are where you're supposed to be. <laughs> right, exactly. So, you yeah. know, it's, yeah. the, the reason I was there was so that I would be okay with figuring out where to put my money in the future, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. another another piece of the puzzle for me. So you know, it's, it's, it's all the building blocks. It's getting used to thinking in that mindset. So another thing that, that I've, I think about is, and I don't remember where I heard this. I don't know if it was you or if it was a TikTok, but I heard this from somebody and I just loved it. It was the idea that, you know, you never say that something's expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, even if somebody's overcharging yeah. for it, you go, yeah. you know, oh, that's expensive. It's like, it's like, wow, you know, that's, that's a lot of money. Good thing I'm rich. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the answer is that's a lot of money. Yeah. Good thing I'm rich. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and if you think it's too much money for what it is, you're like, eh, that's not worth it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. that it's expensive. It's that it, the, the value that you're getting is not worth the money they're asking. And that's a very different thing yes, than saying it's too totally. expensive. Yeah. Or even saying it's expensive because if right. you have lots, if you have an abundance of money, then it's, it's not about and that's one of the things I wanted to say is your language as well. Like when you talk about money, you're giving a directive to your subconscious mind. So if you're saying that's, you know, that's expensive, that's too expensive. I can't afford it. That's a huge amount of money. When we say things like huge and big and massive size is relative. So when we say it's big or huge, the thing that it's relative to is us right? So it makes us small. So we're really aware of how we talk about language because our, 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 sorry, talk about money because our language is giving a directive to our subconscious mind. It's also giving an intention to the universe. Yeah. So when we say it's too expensive, I can't afford it. 
we're keeping ourselves in that, in that, in that kind of current, current reality that we're experiencing. You know, one of the things that I have my clients do is to actually create a shadow budget. So have like your, your actual budget. And I've used this to this kind of like hack to like get houses to sell or increase finances or it's, it's super fun, but you actually have your current budget that you're kind of working with. So this is the kind of the level of fact, this is what's coming into my uh, into my world right now with money. And then this is the shadow budget. So this is how I then start to adapt my nervous system to make it safe to start to receive that money. And Kelly, you talked about that when you and your husband were talking about what, what would we actually do with it? Right. So when we, it's just like, Oh, I would love to have like a million dollars, but it's just like this kind of like wishy-washy out there idea we wouldn't actually know what to do with it. So when we start to make a plan, we're then starting to teach our nervous system and our brain that this is this is coming closer to me and it's safer. You know, yeah. and and this is why lottery winners, the majority of them are either, you know, broke or bankrupt within three years of winning the lottery because they didn't know how to like actually like be identity or sorry, shift their identity to be the person who can handle that much financial abundance. Yeah. Oh, and then the, the other thing I wanted to say too, is that when we're talking about up-leveling our income, we want to notice if we are attached to it coming from one source. Mm -hmm. So financial abundance is, it's a form of abundance and it can have infinite ways to come to us. So there can be ways that we can't even imagine right? That it could come to us. But if we're attaching it all to, it has to come from my business or it has to come from this. It actually comes from source, source, universe, spirit, you know, God, whatever you want to call it, that is the source of all abundance. And so when I say it's only coming through my business, it, there could be other ways that it wants to come to us. That might not be the most efficient way for it to get to us. Well, mm -hmm. and, and that was true for me a couple of weeks, uh, like a week ago, I, uh, I started manifesting more money and I got a random check back from the IRS. Yeah, totally. Yep. And I was like, yep. all right, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Turns out I had overpaid my taxes and didn't even know. I was like, Hey, nice. great. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I had this like random, I had like shares in a company. I think it was like an insurance policy or something that we have and it got sold to somebody else and they sent us like a check for $5,000. I'm like, what? Like didn't even know. Right. Right. There's something we don't even know could be coming our way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was a thousand bucks from the IRS and, and I had a random person, two random people book sessions and wow. that was, you know, more money too. And I was just like, oh my gosh, look at that money just yeah. flew in the door, you know? Yeah can't yeah. beat that with a stick. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. and, and it just was unexpected cash. Mm -hmm. So these are things that, that you have to be open to, right. You know, I had somebody contact me out of the blue. I told you guys that I had, I had sold real estate products back in 2007, right. I didn't actually close the company until 2018, but it just sat there and just, you know, I didn't do anything to market it. I just sort of left it sit there and it would, it would give me a couple thousand dollars a year. Right. And, um, and out of the blue, you know, I closed that company in 2018, it's 2024, right? Six years later, somebody contacted me and said, Hey, do you still have those things? And me being the digital hoarder that I am said, yeah, I still have them. You want one here? Here's the price that they were sold for. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, here's a PayPal link. Just send me the money and some random money from a business that's been closed for six years. Right. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, you just, you, you, it came out of nowhere. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, this is the, the way that that can happen when you allow it to happen. I could have said, oh no, I don't sell that anymore. Blah, blah, blah. But it was like, yes, I'm going to say yes to the universe. But I've got, oh. it, got it sitting on my hard drive. Why would I not say yes to that? Right. And also when you're doing the work to shift your identity, right? So the, the topic for today is how to up, how to up level, you know, before the, fin for the actual results demonstrate that. And it starts with an internal shift. So everything is an inside out job. So we've got to shift ourselves first. And so Kelly, the work that you've been doing to, you know, to, to, to really plan how's that money going to come in and what are we going to do with it and getting really, really concrete with it and starting to really, you know, kind of have that settle into your psyche and recognizing, okay, well, the JV is on hold and right. Not, but 
it's not like, oh, well, it's not going to happen because that was the only way. It's like, okay, well, the JV's on hold. And so how else? I'm open to, right? I'm open to it coming in an infinite number of ways. And so then the universe is like, oh, okay, I got you. I see you. Here's a, here's a bit, here's a bit. Let's get the floodgates going. Here you go. Here you go. Yep. And it did. It delivered me a platform that was a perfect platform to put together the spirit guide school site. And that was, uh, you know, it's been a process to get it done, but it was much easier than trying to design and build it from scratch. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's already ready to go. And there's all sorts of, you know, support and everything else. And, and he's doing with his platform, what I want to do with mine. And so, you know, there's room for me to expand into it and was, and I didn't go looking for it. It just showed up. Right. I was like, okay, well, if this isn't the path to get me there right now, then where is it? And they went bing. Ah, and I'm like, okay, ah, here it is. Cause yeah. I'm, I'm going there. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm going there. Yeah. Yeah. This is happening. Yeah. Right. Exactly. One, one, one other thing I wanted to share in this, I think it's probably gonna be the last thing I'll share on this episode or this topic is one of the other things I'll have my clients do. So we, you know, we start with kind of the vision and then we bring it into a 12 month thing. We identify goals and then we build a calendar. So when you, when you start to create structure, you're actually giving the universe direction. It's like, okay, this is where my life force energy, my soul force energy, this is where it's going to happen. And so you, you, you build that. And one of the things that I had my clients do was to just like sprinkle like magical unicorn dust, random cash injection. So Mm. just on the calendar, they just put, Oh, I think I like a random cash injection here. And I'm going to sprinkle some here and I'm going to sprinkle some here and boom, it shows up like an unexpected, like, Oh, here's like a little, here's a bonus or here's this like little job that you weren't expecting, or here's like a, like a refund check that you didn't even know was going to happen. Right. So sprinkle that shit all over the place, random (laughs) cash injection. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is, we've, we've talked about a lot of things. The, the stuff we haven't really covered is the, you know, how do I get over the stuff? Right. And that's a little bit more complex. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. That's more complex. And that's, that's part of the reason why in the second half of the ascend program, I'm doing a huge amount of personal growth work with people because once you get your offer and your, your course and your marketing and your sales done and you're like, Oh, I'm good. Well, that's when things start to get hard, right? (laughs) Because you've got your ideal program. It's all in alignment with you. You're doing great. And you're doing so great that all of your crap shows up, right? It all comes to the surface and then you got to work through it. And that's why the second half of the program is all about doing that work and then helping you optimize the other pieces that you've already got in place, because that's the stuff that has you sabotage. It's the stuff that has you go into panic pivot. It's the stuff that has you go into, you know, defensive or, you know, resistance, or I can't, or this isn't right for me, or, you know, all the stuff is all the resistance patterns. Right. And so that's super important. And it's not a one and done sort of process, you know, it, it's, it's, oh, got to no. work your way through it. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I want you to know that, yeah, I wanted you to, I wanted to reference it for you so that you knew that it was, it was there, but you need to know that the, this is, this is some deep level work that you're going to have to do in places. I mean, sometimes we've, we've combined love and, and money and therefore, you know, if we don't have any money, we feel unloved, but if we don't have the ability to receive love, then we won't receive money either. And, you know, there's all of this stuff that can go in, right? So there's a huge amount of stuff that comes up around this. And, you know, the idea of putting the weight of your self-worth on your business and trying to crush your business with it, you know, these are things that happen and fairly regularly. So, you know, I just want you to be aware that, that this is, we're giving you the, the, the conscious mindset stuff that you can do on your own, but know that you also need to do this other stuff with a coach to walk you through it. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely mm-hmm. necessary if you're going to get to that next level. Okay. All right. And with that, I'm going to wrap us up and remind you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. And remember that what you focus on is what you create. What you intend is 
uh, what you focus on is what expands. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely and I will talk better next time. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye. <laughs> So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh,